Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robertson on uh, Scottish Veterans Commissioner's Report on Veterans Health and Wellbeing. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions of interruptions. I call the Cabinet Secretary. Ms Robertson, 10 minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank the Scottish Veterans Commissioner, Eric Fraser, for the work he has done in producing his recent report, Veterans Health and Wellbeing, a Distinctive Scottish Approach. Our armed forces community, veterans and their families are an asset to Scotland and the Scottish Government remains committed to providing them with the best possible support and opportunities. The appointment of the Veterans Commissioner led the way across the UK as a dedicated post to promote these interests. Last year I met with the Commissioner to discuss his forthcoming report. I was pleased that he recognised the strong track record in Scotland of ensuring veterans are given the best possible treatment, care and support. We welcome the report, which makes a number of recommendations for how we could refocus and re-energise Scotland's approach to looking after our ex-service men and women. The report was considered in detail at the recent meeting of the Armed Forces and Veterans Joint Group. The group, which is chaired by the Director General of Health and Social Care, includes representation from key armed forces and veterans stakeholders in Scotland. I look forward to hearing the outcome of their considerations. The Scottish Government remains committed to ensuring that all veterans living in Scotland are able to access the best possible care and support, including safe, effective and person-centred health care. Our current policy states that all veterans should receive priority treatment for health problems as a result of service to their country, subject to clinical priority for all patients. This means veterans should receive priority treatment for ongoing health problems that are as a direct result of their service, unless there is an emergency case or other case that demands higher clinical priority. However, the report highlights that this concept introduced in the 1950s is outdated. The Veterans Commissioner recognises that we should be moving beyond the priority treatment policy and calls for a greater focus on the principles of excellence, accessibility and sustainable treatment for all veterans. The guiding principles for veterans' health suggested in Eric Fraser's report are entirely consistent with our ambition for safe, effective and person-centred healthcare set out in the Healthcare Equality Strategy for NHS Scotland. The integration of health and social care in recent years has changed the delivery landscape for healthcare in Scotland, so we need to ensure that the mechanisms in place to support veterans' healthcare are still fit for purpose. It is the Scottish Government's continuing aim to ensure that the healthcare needs of serving personnel and veterans are better understood and supported within the NHS. We're already progressing work which addresses some of the recommendations highlighted in the report. The report makes the point that strong and visible leadership is needed to deliver high standards of healthcare. That leadership needs to be in place both nationally and locally. I've already mentioned the Armed Forces and Veterans Health Joint Group. I know that they will be keen to ensure that their membership and remit reflects the new landscape in which healthcare for veterans is delivered. At local level, we have a network of NHS ch champions for Armed Forces and Veterans who are there to support Armed Forces personnel, veterans and their families to get access to high quality services and treatment when required. To raise awareness of the policies already in place to support the healthcare needs of veterans, we recently issued updated information about this to the NHS veterans champions, NHS chief executives and to primary care leads. This includes guidance for GPs, which includes how veterans can share their full service medical record with their GP. Going forward, we'll look at how we can build effective working links between NHS and local authority armed forces champions to reflect the new integrated landscape. My officials have also worked with Veterans Scotland to update existing information for veterans about how to access healthcare on NHS Inform. This will be followed by an awareness raising campaign to co coincide with Armed Forces Day uh, in June of this year. The Scottish Government recognises the importance of supporting veterans' long-term healthcare needs. It's essential that appropriate support is available to veterans and that funding and services are sustainable. The Scottish Government is at the very earliest stage of considering a managed network approach as a potential longer term solution to ensuring equitable and sustainable services for veterans across Scotland. Networks are a well established way of driving improvement in the quality of care through a coordinated approach. A formal NHS National Services Scotland application process exists and NHS NSS are providing advice 
on the necessary next steps and time frame before the proposal is progressed further. We would envisage a range of stakeholders and interests being involved as the proposal develops. One example of where we have provided additional support for those with the most severe and enduring healthcare needs is through the National Specialist Prosthetic Service. In 2013, the Scottish Government made a commitment to invest £4.5 million over three years into the service. The service was developed to provide continuing care to those who would benefit most from these new technologies based on clinical need. The service continues to work with manufacturers to ensure the very best services are available to our veterans in Scotland. I welcome the focus on mental health of veterans and their families in the Commissioner's report. The report rightly focuses on a number of positives. Collectively, we should be a proud, proud of achieving these. The report recognises the significantly improved support for those suffering mental Ill, Ill health after time spent in the armed forces. It recognises that in recent years, veterans have been able to access a number of specialist and mainstream services, with Scotland being in the vanguard in many instances. It also recognises that the vast majority of those leaving the military do so without severe mental health problems and cope well with transition to civilian life. The clarity in the report of the importance of mental health fully accords with the guiding ambition in our mental health strategy. This is that we must prevent and treat mental health problems with the same commitment, passion and drive as we do with physical health problems. In this respect, we all have a responsibility to help realise our vision of a Scotland where people can get the right help at the right time, expect recovery and enjoy, fully enjoy their rights free from discrimination and stigma. However, while there's much to be proud of, I agree with the Commissioner that there's no room for complacency and that further improvements can be made. I note the key recommendation that the Scottish Government and NHS Scotland, through a network on veterans' health, produce a mental health action plan for the long-term delivery of services and support. And I look forward to hearing the considerations of the Armed Forces and Veterans Joint Group before taking next steps. However, I'm confident that many of the key themes and the 40 actions in the Scottish Government's 10-year mental health strategy will impact positively on veterans and their families and that this will lead to improvement in many of the areas that the commissioners and veterans identify as important. The strategy seeks to ensure equal access to the most effective and safest care and treatment, a reduction in the variation of care which can be experienced, improvements in the quality of care and in measuring health outcomes and in tackling stigma and discrimination. To support improvements, I expect in 2017-18 for the first time that NHS investment in mental health will exceed £1 billion. I also secured additional funding in the Scottish Budget for an additional 800 mental health professionals over the next five years in key areas such as A&E and e GP practices. This and other investments in mental health will help drive improvement across the whole system, including for veterans and their families. I also acknowledge the Commissioner's call to protect specialist mental health services, and he mentioned specifically those services provided by Combat Stress and Veterans First Point. The funding available to support veterans' mental health through Veterans First Point and Combat Stress will total over £5.8 million over the next three years. I hope that this demonstrates our commitment to improving mental health services for veterans and I look forward to considering what further help and support we can offer. I'd like to end by yet again thanking Eric Fraser for this important work in highlighting not only the excellent services that are already in place, but how we can continue to ensure equitable and high quality services for our veterans. We have much to be proud of, but we should not be complacent. We will consider the findings and recommendations carefully, including how we respond to the challenges raised. The next update to Parliament will be in the autumn of this year and will provide a, an opportunity to demonstrate what we have done and our future intentions in responding to this latest report on veterans' health and wellbeing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. We help if members who wish to ask a question press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Maurice Corrie. Mr Corrie, please. Uh, 
thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Firstly, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of today's statement and also join her in thanking Eric Fraser, the Scottish Veterans Commissioner, for producing his latest report. And I welcome the recommendations he's made in this report. Uh, YouGov's survey of, for SAFA found some startling facts to do with veterans. It found that 34% felt overwhelmed by negative feelings and that 27% admitted to having suicidal thoughts after finishing their military service. It shows we need to do more for mental health of our veterans community. In the Cabinet Secretary's statements, uh, statement, she spoke of improving mental health services of veterans, which I welcome strongly, and also she spoke of the funding of the Veterans First Point provided by the Scottish Government, which plays such a vital role in the health care of veterans in the area it operates in, in particular related to mental health. The Cabinet Secretary will know that this is a jointly funded programme, half from government resources, half from the Health Board resources, uh, to fund first, Veterans First Point. But I have become aware that Veterans First Point is being considered for cuts by some health boards, which would result in Veterans First Point being lost in those areas. We have already lost Veterans First Point in Highland and Grampian. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit today to ensuring that Veterans First Point doesn't continue to decline in size any further? as my aspiration would be for the Veterans First Point services to cover the entire country of Scotland and be available to all veterans there. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank uh, Maurice Corey for uh, his uh, question. Also, uh, can I uh, welcome Eric Fraser to the gallery? I've just been made aware that he's in the gallery. He's very welcome and hope uh, he finds the proceedings uh, interesting. Uh, Maurice Corey, I hope, is aware of the background to the, if the funding of Veterans First Point. He will hopefully be aware of the, the history of LIBOR funding here. So uh, clearly, uh, at the end, when LIBOR funding uh, uh, came to an end uh, last year, um, the understanding that, uh, that local partnerships would then need to uh, ensure um, uh, that services became self-sustaining didn't materialise and therefore we as the government stepped in and offered that partnership funding. So I think it is important to understand the, the background of, of the LIBOR funding issue. Um, so Veterans First Point is a network of, of NHS-led services across six areas in Scotland um, and uh, those areas uh, are important. I have nothing to suggest that those areas are not going to continue with that joint funding. Uh, he mentioned the uh, um, issue of uh, Grampian and Highland. Um, he will be aware, of course, that uh, in Grampian, they have uh, since enhanced their service through a new venture with the Defence Medical Wel Welfare Service to ensure the particular needs of older veterans and their families in the North East have access to support uh, when faced uh, with challenges. And also in Highland, I don't know if he is aware, but uh, they um, have... Um, recently been awarded a further LIBOR grant of over a million pounds and are discussing how to move this forward with a national third sector provider. So I think there will be uh, hopefully good news emanating from Highland in that respect. He'll also be aware that some other boards have never been part of that LIBOR funding, so have always had their own services for veterans, and that's okay. What I want to make sure of as Cabinet Secretary is that there are services supporting veterans, whether that's through Veterans First Point or through other services. The importance is not who provides them or how they're provided, but that they are uh, provided. And of course, we provide £825,000 to support the Veterans First Point services. And of course, that's been uh, match funded by those boards. But, you know, I will certainly follow up and make sure that those boards that have committed match funding continue to do so. Anna Sarwar. I thank the Cabinet to take a Point of order. Uh, can I declare that I am a veteran myself? I'll put that on record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Anna Sarwar, please. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early start of the statement and I join the Cabinet Secretary in recognising the contribution of our armed forces community, our veterans and their families. I welcome this report by Eric Fraser and the Cabinet Secretary's statement. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week, so I want to focus my remarks on, on that. One recommendation in the report is for a new national action plan and the report highlights on funding, particularly for specialist services, that at times it's disjointed and in some cases ad hoc. Um, it raises concerns about geographic inequalities in services. It also highlights a recurring theme from veterans that mainstream NHS service providers sometimes don't always understand their specific needs and experiences. And it also goes on to raise the importance of the suicide prevention plan um, as well as substance misuse strategy. 
Um, will all these issues be considered as part of that new national action plan and what would be the time frame of delivering that action plan? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I said in my statement, uh, Scotland's 10-year mental health strategy launched last year does reinforce our commitment to the Armed Forces Covenant and includes a range of actions to improve care, services and support for people with a mental health problem, including veterans and their families. Uh, so obviously some of that work is already underway. Now, in terms of the process going forward, uh, the recommendations are uh, being looked at in detail. Uh, the Mental Health Action Plan is a a key one and we will take that forward through the network on veterans uh, health uh, um, that I think is the best um, forum in order to take forward uh, that I think it's for them to set out the time frame uh, to make sure that they have enough time in order to make sure that this action plan uh, is as good as it can be and, um, and uh, um, will take forward uh, the recommendations and the issues raised within the report I think it's also worth pointing out that in terms of specialist services, those are already provided a very high quality and you know, combat stress themselves provide a 24 hour helpline for veterans or family members who need to talk about mental health. So that is a very good service provided by um, a first class organisation. Thank you. If 11 members wishing to ask questions could ask for succinct questions and answers which reciprocate. Richard Lockhead, please, followed by Edward Mountain. In thanking the Scottish Veterans Commissioner Eric Fraser for another very valuable report this time into the health and well-being of veterans and also the Cabinet Secretary for her supportive statement. Can I welcome the commitment to have an awareness raising campaign in June and can I also uh, ask the Cabinet Secretary to recognise that in rural areas in particular we have to make every effort to make sure that veterans in places like Murray, where there are thousands, are aware of the services that are out there and perhaps you can speak to Veterans Scotland about how to do that in the foreseeable future. Cabinet Secretary. I, I think the awareness raising campaign is an opportunity to make sure that this range of services which we've uh, talked about, I've talked about in my statement and uh, members have, have mentioned that, that veterans and their families are first of all aware of those and I think Armed Forces Day uh, next uh, month provides a, an opportunity uh, for those to be highlighted. So I think the awareness raising campaign will be uh, very important in doing that and we'll fully support it. Edwin Mountain followed by Graeme Day. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to declare that I am a veteran as well. Uh, the report identifies that many servicemen have been exposed to combat harsh physical conditions, stressful situations, and a lifestyle that is detrimental to, uh, in effect on their long-term well-being. The well-being and mental health of such servicemen is constantly being challenged by historic allegations being levied against individuals. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that there should be a statute of limitations in relation to historic allegations? And will she write to the MAD supporting moves to enforce such limitations? Cabinet Secretary. Well, that really is a bit out with the scope of, of my statement, uh, I have to say, but I will certainly get the relevant minister to, to write to uh, Edward Mountain uh, on that subject. I think what uh, the point I would agree with Edward Mountain on is that uh, you know, many uh, veterans uh, do have those specific needs. Uh, however, many veterans come out and adjust very well to civilian life. But for those who need that support, whether it's with P uh, PTSD or other issues, what's important is, first of all, the, the sharing of records happens quickly so that uh, the transition and the information on health is transferred quickly. That is an issue uh, that needs to be improved. Uh, and. Uh, uh, that, I think, would help to make sure that those veterans that need that specific support get it as quickly as possible. Graeme Day, followed by David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President. for following on from that answer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that for veterans to receive the appropriate care and support they need, it's absolutely essential that the MOD pass on full and accurate medical records when requested? Something I understand is still not a given. Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have been pressing UK government ministers for some time about the need to improve the process of transferring medical records for personnel leaving the services. Officials are continuing to engage with NHS Digital about the Cortisone programme, which will deliver an integrated, compatible data sharing capability with the NHS. The importance of this programme to assist the transfer of prior medical history and to ensure continuity of care after service cannot be overstated. Uh, I call David Stewart, followed by Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I also welcome the constructive and positive report from the Commissioner on Veterans Health and Wellbeing, and also welcome into the gallery today. Um, 
Presiding officer, in, in my post, I have had a number of issues from veterans, uh, particularly allowing those suffering from complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Is this an issue that the current secretary is willing uh, to share with uh, Healthcare Improvement Scotland to look at some detailed work uh, for those veterans that are suffering from this very complex and very difficult condition? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, and a range of evidence-based treatments are available for uh, PTSD, um, determined obviously by clinicians and, and based on a detailed assessment and tailored to the needs of the, of the patient. Um, now, those vary from low to medium level interventions that are available uh, on the NHS to more uh, specialised care and treatment um, that, uh, that are more uh, specialist uh, in nature. Um, we also, as I mentioned earlier, continue to fund the, the provision of specialists in community mental health services by Combat Stress, who have a lot of experience in that area. Um, and of course, they have a residential facility uh, for those where that is the most appropriate treatment. And of course, we've funded that uh, to the tune of £1.4 million pounds this year, but very happy to make sure we keep these matters under review. Mark Ruskell, followed by Alec Cole Hamilton. Thank you. The Commissioner's report highlights early service leavers who voluntarily leave the military before completing the minimum four-year term as being at particular risk. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what steps the government's taking to ensure that this very vulnerable group of people has access to the best care, quality of care over their lifetimes? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, uh, I think it's very important that uh, those uh, early leavers, as, as Mark Ruskell described them, are, are a particularly vulnerable group and that they have to get uh, the right services uh, provided quickly. I think partly that again comes back to the sharing of information that, so that services can kick in very quickly and of course um, the, the services that are provided uh, through whether that's Veterans First Point or through Combat Stress have a, a particular uh, focus and a lot of that is also involving um, peer support so that people who understand uh, are, are uh, able to, to help and support. And there's a lot of third sector uh, support there as well. So um, in short, the answer is yes, but I think the commissioner's report points us to where we can do better uh, for that particularly vulnerable group. Alec Cole Hamilton followed by John Mason. Thank you. It is a, a source of uh, our collective shame that veterans are more likely than most to join the ranks of our homeless population. And given the causal link between mental ill health and homelessness, can I ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to help homeless veterans, particularly those struggling with mental ill health? I don't know if that's your portfolio. Anyway, Cabinet Secretary. Well, again, Alec Cole Hamilton points to a particular vulnerable group of veterans. And of course, what I've laid out here today is the, is the uh, issue of response around health and social care support. But he will be aware that there are many other supports that exist for veterans in Scotland. We have a strong track record of supporting uh, the veterans community. So the Scottish Veterans Fund has, since its creation in 2008, committed uh, over £1.3 million pounds to more than 150 projects and organisations organization supporting veterans across Scotland. Some of that will be in the area that uh, Alec Cole Hamilton is talking about around housing and uh, homelessness prevention. Uh, very happy to uh, further, uh, provide further detail to Alec Cole Hamilton on the issue of homelessness more specifically. John Mason, followed by Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I mean, further to the previous question, I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary would accept that while it's not specifically health, an issue like employment is also an impact and does affect people's health, uh, even though I accept it's not under her specific remit. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, Keith Brown is the, the Cabinet Secretary uh, for the Economy, Jobs and Fair Work. Um, and with uh, it overall responsibility for veterans within government, um, gave a, a full update to Parliament uh, last November on the recommendations uh, in the Commissioner's uh, report on transition, the provision of housing information and employability skills and learning. And there'll be a further update provided this autumn. So there is a, a lot of work in that sphere of helping veterans to move on, to create new opportunities back in civilian life and employability skills are, and learning opportunities are a very important part of that. Thank you, Brian Whittle, followed by Gordon MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary agrees with me that in delivering the best treatment, care and support for our veterans, that we should be cognizant of Sam H's assertion that inclusivity uh, and physical activity are key elements of ensuring good mental health. And we have witnessed the incredible impact, for example, of the Invictus Games 
that I've had on this community and the, the raising of the awareness of this community. And with that in mind, would the Cabinet Secretary join colleagues and I in our enthusiasm in calling for uh, uh, the Invictus Games to be hosted in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. So, I mean, obviously the Scottish Government acknowledges very much the power of sport and the impact that it plays in our lives and in the lives of injured servicemen and women. Uh, over the coming weeks, we'll be speaking to partners to scope out what a potential bid for Scotland uh, to host a future game, uh, Games entails and very happy to keep Brian Whittle informed as those discussions go forward. Gord MacDonald, followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide details on what is being done to ensure physically injured veterans are benefiting from the latest technology in order to allow them to regain and maintain their mobility? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in my statement, I talked about the investments that have been made in the prosthetics services, for example, making sure that the, uh, those uh, are um, quickly um, turned around, but also that they're high quality. Uh, so a lot of investment has been made there uh, in terms of supporting veterans' specific needs who have got disabilities due to uh, their service. Um, and of course, the Commissioner's report lays out a, a number of recommendations that will improve the, not just the, the physical health, but also the mental health of veterans. And those are ones that we're determined to take forward. Thank you. Daniel Johnson, followed by Claire Hockey. Thank you. Members will note my interest and personal experience of ADHD, and indeed other members have rightly raised questions about mental health of veterans. Those mental health issues are often impacted by or have underlying causes in neurodevelopmental disorders such as ADHD and ASD, and I think the case study in the report is very useful in highlighting those issues. So can I ask what help and support will be extended by the Scottish Government to veterans with neurodevelopmental disorders such as ADHD in their improved mental health services for veterans. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I think that is an issue that we would uh, expect the new mental health action plan to consider, um, but I'll certainly make sure that that message is passed on after uh, the statement to make sure that that is captured in the work on the action plan going forward. Clay Hockey. Members to my register of interest and I hold an honorary contract with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Recommendation four in the report would establish a national managed clinical network on veterans' health based on evidence from the existing managed clinical network for perinatal mental health. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an early comment on her consideration of this particular recommendation? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we absolutely recognise the importance of supporting veterans' long-term health care needs. And we are, as I said in my statement, at the initial stages of exploring with NHS National Services Division the option of developing a managed network approach as a longer-term solution to equitable and sustainable health services for veterans. There is a process involved there, which again I laid out in my statement, but um, NHS National Services Scotland will shortly provide advice on the necessary set-up requirements and the next steps before we progress further. Again, happy to keep Clare Hockey informed of that as it goes forward. Thank you very much. That concludes questions. I'm pleased to say all members had the opportunity to ask their questions. I'll suspend briefly to allow the front benches to take their places, please.